I'd like to call a special board of trustees meeting uh, to order. If we could all uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. We have a roll call. Roman? Here. Armoli? Here. Principal? Present. Maloney? Here. Wyland? She was online, but she just dropped off, so she might be back. Okay. Sagami? Here. And vacant. Is here. The vacant is here. Thanks for getting my name right. I appreciate I'm sorry, that. I'll That's a no. Do not get off. That was really funny. Anyway, I've been called way different things. So, uh, public comments. Uh, any public comments? Any public comments? Anybody online? I've got a public comment here that was uh, addressed to one of the trustees that I'll read into the record. Uh, Jamie, please forward the file. Uh, okay. I was having a talk with a few residents about the new assessments on property value, plainly stated. Taxes shouldn't rise every time the city wants to revalue your property. That's absurd. Our wages don't increase as fast as the overinflated housing market bubble expands and the constantly decreasing value of the US dollar. Our property values aren't worth more than the dollar in our bank account is worth less. That's all this is and our wages aren't increasing as fast as our dollar is devalued. People can't Plan for a future if they are taxed on unrealized gains of the value of their house. The value of their house is subjective. You should be taxed on the percentage of your house of what it was worth when you built it, and that percentage should be passed on to the new buyer when the house is sold at whatever value it was sold for, not whatever value the city tells you it's worth, and comes knocking on your door with their hand out because they, they've overbuilt and overextended themselves. Only when a property is sold should the city maybe be able to ask for more taxes based on the value of the property. If the city really cares about its people, it should act, assess their citizens yearly incomes over the last 10 years and see if that has risen as quickly as housing prices. Thanks, Jim. So this is from you, Jim? This is from... Uh... Kyle Bender, 5007 Prairie Street. Okay. Okay. That was sent to me. Okay. To be read in the public record. Okay. So read. Anything else? Just a public comment. Yeah, just public comment. So, so you see no. all the invitation. You're welcome to try. I'm sorry. What? This invitation. Oh, pick up. Well, I will referee or watch, and I will definitely bet. I will put waiters on. So you're welcome to try it. I think it's fun. Yeah. And she's a good instructor. I like um, ping pong. I can maneuver pretty well in ping pong. Then you can do this. Uh, no, I've, I've seen pickleball. I have too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I would be one of the billion uh, knee injuries for sure. So I have a hell of a time getting out of my car. Okay, so it is 10-7. Hey. Rock and roll. Well, uh, let's see uh, if that's it with public comments. Minutes from previous meetings. Approval of September twenty third, twenty twenty four, special board budget workshop meeting. What's your pleasure? To approve. Move to approve by Zagami. Second. Second by Cronin. Anything on the question? Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. So carried. Unfinished aye. business. Review and discussion of two thousand twenty five budget. Uh, first on the list is a presentation by Greg Johnson, Eller's Senior Municipal Advisor on Preliminary Financing Plan. Greg, thanks for your attendance. My pleasure. Good evening. Um, up on the screen is the copy of the 2024-2025 Preliminary Financing Plan. This funds projects identified in the Capital Improvement Plan for 2024 and 2025. The summary of the financing plan kind of provides all the details of the financial analysis that follows. In terms of the debt levy, the village's levy for debt service for uh, incorporating these projects, the debt service levy would increase by about $375,000 per year from 2025 to 2026. All projects are proposed in this version of the plan to be financed with general obligation debt. 
Uh, the village's general obligation debt limit is prescribed by statute. Uh, the amount of principal outstanding of general obligation debt cannot exceed 5% of the village's total equalized value. With existing debt and the proposed uh, notes for the 24 and 25 projects, uh, the village would reach about 46% of its debt limit, uh, leaving over 47 billion of future borrowing capacity. Since the financing plan incorporates aspects of projects for the water, sewer, and stormwater utility, uh, we kind of do what's called a, a revenue or debt coverage test. Look at the net revenues of the utility to see if they are higher than the proposed debt service payments. For the water utility, based on the 2023 uh, net revenues from the most recent audited financial statements, there's revenue debt currently outstanding for the water utility, which requires that those net revenues have to be at least 1.25 times higher than the debt service payments. Um, so that is being met. And then we also look at what's called an all-in coverage metric that takes revenue debt and general obligation debt to make sure that you're at least collecting net revenues that are equal to all your debt service payments. Uh, so that is met as well. For the sewer utility, uh, based on the 2023 net revenues, all-in coverage is above one, which is kind of where we prefer to see it. And then for the stormwater utility, their revenue debt coverage of at least 1.25 is met. And then the all-in coverage slightly exceeds one. So I'll kind of quickly walk through the rest of the analysis, but that's kind of the high points in terms of the impact. Um, so this is just the detailed project list that uh, was provided to us to build the financing plan. Uh, we identified the specific project, uh, the repayment source of the debt, whether it's levy, sewer, storm, or TIT related, or water utility. And then we showed the term of which the project's debt is amortized. Uh, all projects in this uh, version are funded with general obligation debt. So we're looking at total projects of approximately 14.5 million for 2024 and 2020. The next page just takes that same information and just breaks down the debt by repayment source. Uh, so again, there's levy, sewer, TID2, stormwater, and, and water components. And so we show how much of the total project cost is repaid by each of those revenue sources and how the debt is amortized in this financing plan. The next chart kind of summarizes your existing general obligation debt. Uh, the village has principal and interest payments, and then they budget several non-levy revenue sources to repay that debt, namely revenue from the stormwater utility, sewer and water utility. Uh, and then there's been some uh, fund balance budgeted and some interest income and some assessments when available. So this just shows the village's current levy for debt service before we look at the impact of the proposed 24 and 25 projects. The next two pages just show the detail behind the proposed financing for the 24 and 25 projects breaks down the debt service payment by repayment source term, uh, similar to how it was laid out in the summary charts. So you can just see all the debt is broken down uh, for budgeting purposes. So you know how much to budget for the utilities and the TIN districts and the levy. Uh, so we're estimating that the total principal and interest for these notes is about 19.3 million for the 20 year term of the notes. When we look at incorporating these notes along with your existing that, excuse me, that's shown on the next page, uh, the tax impact with new debt. Uh, so we take your existing levy for debt service on the far left-hand side, you add in the gross principal and interest from the 24 notes, then we show the various non-levy revenue sources that would be pledged to repay some of this debt from sewer to two stormwater and water utility. So in that debt service levy column, total net debt service levy, that shows your combined levy for existing debt plus these uh, proposed notes. Uh, so again, you'll see from uh, 2024 to 2025, the debt service levy would increase approximately 372,000. And then from 25 to 26, it would increase about 376,000. So that kind of gives you kind of a consistent levy amount in terms of the impact of these projects over the next two years, uh, since you fund two years worth of projects. Then the debt service levy starts to decline, leaving room for uh, future capital projects beyond what's identified uh, the next two years. I mentioned the general obligation debt limit. So this chart just kind of shows how that is calculated and determined. So at the end of 2024, with these proposed notes, the village would have approximately 14.5 million of debt outstanding. So that takes you to 46% of your debt limit, leaving 47.1 million of capacity. And then the remaining charts show those debt service coverage metrics I was mentioning. Uh, so for the water utility on the far left-hand side, the revenue debt coverage 
That's a covenant of some of the existing revenue debt outstanding that must be met. That metric must be 1.25 or higher. And then on the far right-hand side, we add in general obligation debt and factor in hydro payment. That'd be water utility mixed back to the village. Uh, there's no legal requirement for what that coverage ratio needs to be, but we like to see it over one, uh, which it is. Uh, so that shows that kind of at a high level, uh, kind of the water utility's ability to support the existing debt service payments. Then for the sewer utility, same uh, kind of coverage calculations on the next page. This is just an all-in coverage. Um, you'll see uh, after 2025, your existing debt service payments drop off significantly. So really the impact of adding in these particular projects, you'll still see a, a total decrease in sewer utilities overall debt service payments from 25 to 26, even incorporating these notes. Uh, so the all-in coverage metric, you know, once you get to 2026 is well over two, uh, which is very strong. And then finally, the stormwater utility um, has some existing revenue debt outstanding. Again, that coverage metric has to be 1.25 or higher, um, you're over two. And then for the all-in coverage, that adds in the revenue debt and uh, proposed general obligation debt. Again, no required metric, but we'd like to see that over one. Um, so you're over one um, based on the 2023 net revenues. Uh, so all three utilities, you'll have good coverage. So in summary, uh, you know, there's two types of debt. We're primarily talking about general obligation debt, which is subject to that limit of principal outstanding. Uh, the village does have the option to finance water, uh, stormwater and sewer projects with what's called revenue debt, where you're still pledging revenue from each of those utilities to repay the debt service, but there's no statutory limit on the amount of revenue debt you can have outstanding. Uh, but that generally does come at a higher interest rate than what you would get through general obligation debt. So it really is about preserving geo debt capacity if you need it. Uh, and again, your geo debt capacity with these notes at the end of 2024 would be at 46%. Um, so that's kind of the overview of the of the financing plan for 24 mm -hmm. and 25 projects. I'm happy to entertain questions. So what's our total debt? Outstanding. Yeah. About 37 um, million. If you go back to kind of that geo debt capacity a couple of slides back. Your total geo debt outstanding with these notes at the end of 2024 would be about 40.5 million. 40 million? Yes. Of general obligation. Question. Where I know we were going to be going up on our debt. And then I thought we were going to, it's just going to be a matter of a few years and we go down. Is that still? In terms work? of your debt capacity? Yeah. So if you go back to the chart on page nine, um, that kind of illustrates the um, projection. Um, so you'll see, you know, in the far right hand side, this incorporates your existing debt and your proposed uh, notes. So you'll see you're at the end of 2024, you'd be at 46%. This covers two years worth of projects. So then at the end of 2026, if you're kind of doing every other year borrowings, um, you'd be back down to about 39% of your debt limit. So as you start paying the debt off and you see growth in your uh, total equalized value, that, that ratio starts to come back down. I knew there was something that we were gonna have like a spike in our uh, payments and then we were gonna come back down again and I was just like, more questions? That, seriously, that's it? Where do you come from? Like Madison or Chicago? Or where do you come from, Greg? I've been at Stevens Point the last few days. So. Okay. <laughs> so I know you're closer to that. Go ahead. The remaining 47%, how much that be? Can you repeat the second part? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your second. Okay, you said we have additional 47% we can borrow. You're at 46% of your debt limit, so your debt limit goes up to 100%. So we would never recommend that you get that high. No. Um, you know, so I mean, you're, you know, we typically would, you know, you're around kind of 50%. I mean, that's kind of a good target to be at. I believe you have a policy that you're target is around 50 percent so this is kind of taking you right right at that policy target well that's how i was concerned when i seen the 47 but i couldn't get over here and then i knew there was like i said there was going to be a 
a spike and then we were supposed to come back down and get and the alternative is if you see kind of a larger increase of projects over the next couple of years you know that's where you can utilize revenue debt for utility projects still finance the projects but they won't count towards that statutory right. but it's always higher interest question okay, great how does like a safe drinking water and clean water fund loans work into this so you have the option to do safety. So what safe drinking water fund and clean water fund loans are, they are that's a loan program that's administered jointly by the Department of Administration and, and the Department of Natural Resources to fund qualifying water, sewer, and stormwater projects and at subsidized interest rates. Great program to utilize. You have the option of doing those through general obligation debt or revenue debt. You get the same interest rate, uh, so there's no benefit there. Uh, but if it's revenue debt, you have to meet those coverage requirements. Most communities will do it as a revenue pledge if their revenues are sufficient, so it doesn't count towards your general obligation debt. But at the time you secure those loans, you have, it's called the security pledge. You have to specify which it's going to be. Because uh, there's a couple of water projects we have in here that likely would turn into safe, safe drinking water loan. Mm -hmm. So those are ones we might want to look at, I guess, pulling out of any uh, sure. short term. Okay. Is there any penalty to paying those loans off faster? The safe drinking, or, the safe drinking and the clean water fund loans are not prepayable. Uh, so while you get a lower interest rate, they, they can't be paid off early. So that's kind of a trade-off. Uh, I mean, the only time they'll allow you to pay those off early is if you request and that request and there has to be some special circumstances. But they're generally not uh, prepayable. See? Michael, I have a, are we are we looking at any any larger um, water utility projects coming up? I know one time we, I remember seeing a plan for like the the water the master plan for ten years. Yeah. That involved the new water tower out on West Nav. Correct. Are we looking at doing that anytime in the future? Uh, the PFAS world kind of took over. Sure. So I guess the. The reason for putting in well eight right away, because initially the plan was do well seven uh, and then get the tower so we had capacity. But we have with well eight uh, also getting built at the same time, we have uh, capacity uh, in versus storage. So that's how they look at it is do you have enough storage or do you have enough pumping capacity? Sure. So we added pumping capacity because that was going to be uh, cheaper than building a new water tower. Um, looking at the long-term uh, project list we would, we'll have coming up for. Um, so we have well four that's currently going through the, or we did get a safe drinking water loan on that one. Uh, well three will be submitting uh, this coming cycle for that uh, PFAS treatment for well three. And uh, likely wells one and five will be following that. So water tower will probably be following after uh, we get make sure the the source um, sources are. Well, it's, it's it's not anything super. It's probably not within the next. I'd say if we do it within the next five years, I'd be surprised. Okay. So all these include the removal of iron and manganese also. Correct. So that's why the well three project had to be broken out first because we had to do the pilot study to show that uh, the iron and manganese removal was required in order for the emerging contaminant funding to be uh, allowed for that well, for that process, so. There is a lot of complaint about the quality of the water. People complaining, I think these projects should help out to eliminate some of it, but yeah. not all of it, unless you do all the wells. Yeah. Which I and suggest we get them on the program to do it. Correct, and, and with the EPA um, proposed limits for uh, PFAS, wells one and five, are teetering right on the limit. So uh, more than likely would probably be best off to just take those offline until the treatment gets uh, installed for those. So, Do we self-test or Marathon County's test or both? Uh, for the, like for drinking PFAS water. drinking water? Drinking water. We use the, uh, yeah, Marathon County Health Lab. We use Northern Lakes and then uh, I forget the name. There's a place in the business park too that is a, DNR certified lab. So we have hundred gallons of water um, out of our well or out of a tap. How many of those gallons are for drinking for 
your your body, cooking or drinking? I I don't know. Could we find out? I, I don't know. I just think it's. I mean, we're you, that same water we're treating and treating and treating and treating, and then watering our grass, washing cars, doing this, spraying this, doing our wash. I just I think sometimes I, I bet it's I bet it's less than fifteen percent. Yeah, I guess I, I will. I mean, toilet. Do, do you need drinkable water for your toilet? I mean, we we meter water as it enters the house. I, I don't know how we. Yeah. I know. I'm just yeah. I'm just thinking we'd all be drinking umbrella drinks right now if we could figure out a way to split the water up because we'd all be down somewhere on a beach with a, a patent on how to do water like that. So we wouldn't spend so much water on the other sixty percent or seventy percent. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're. Well, I've got neighbors pulling you know, water out of the Eau Claire River. I mean, water in your lawns. You know? There are cities, communities that have a dual water main system for gray water reuse, so you can't drink just, it, but it can just be a thought. watering. I, I, I know it's a big deal, and right away it's double pipes and double this and yeah. double meters, but in the long run, holy mackerel. Okay, any more questions from Greg, or to Greg, I should say? Good job, I think less questions is good. Right. So I would thank Greg, so. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. Let's see. Uh, capital improvement plan. Oh, hey, I got a question. It might not be the right time. Not really for you, Greg. So let's say we have a um, uh, let's say we have a presentation like this. Is there any way we could have a pass out? Could does anybody have his presentation on your computers right now? No. No. Yes. Yeah. You do. I have his presentation. Yeah, that's on, how I. Is there a way to get those on, on, our computer? on your computer? Yeah, I mean. Oh. I, I don't like turning around and I think this should be there because there's no way you can see this out there. I mean, I can barely see that. I mean, you know, here we are now, you know, the deal, but the one that was here in the old boardroom, I could read and the seven of us could read one that's right here down lower than that. But this one here, when I'm looking around watching everybody spinning their heads around or kind of like pretending to look at it and not being able to see it. Right. I, I just I just think yeah. if we truly want to know what we're talking about instead of just yesing to the presenter, we should have this in paper. I know it's a few more trees um, or have it on our, you know, I, I get not I get not having it early because it's it should be something that we want to talk about here. But um, I just think that we should probably move in that direction. That's all. We can have it on the computers. That's yeah. Yeah. Have. Computers would be outstanding. Yeah, that'd be great. I was looking around, looking at everybody on their computers. I thought, okay, which ones are looking at this and which ones aren't? Some of the charts, even when they're on that screen, which that TV is huge. I, yeah. like, it's hard to read. Well, that's why yeah. I, and I've got my contacts in and I still can't. And read. I, yeah. I do so, this and yeah. lean back and then I can. <laughs> well, I don't want to have my back to the audience. Well, I know. Yeah, that's so. why I do halfway. No, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make a stand. So I, I log into the Zoom meeting just so I can see these things mm -hmm. and zoom in on my screen. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we could try to make that a standard login for all the yeah. computers too. I just think if, if we have a chance to do it, we should. So, okay. Good idea. Again, yep. Uh, capital improvement, right? Well, uh, small. This is going through. <laughs> Basically highlighting what's in the packet right now. So we're going to talk about the debt service and the capital. Um, so the debt service funds used to account for the accumulation of resources used for the team of deal bonds, <coughs> notes, and for revenue bonds issued by the TIF districts, known as our CDA bonds. So the screen in front of you basically is a snapshot of what we're looking of budgeting for our debt service fund. Uh, for the revenues and has the property <coughs> taxes, which we're looking at going up $367,000. Um, the other revenues that are coming in there are transfers from CDA and then um, special assessments. There's a summary of the bonds that we have issued. We have the 2019A, 2020B, 2020C, 22A, and 23A. The last two, the 22 and the 23, were both for our new municipal center. Um, then it has the proposed debt of 7.5 million, which Greg was just talking about. 
This is a summary of all the debt notes. Um, in the end, you can see the total levy for the principal and interest. Um, Greg structures it so there's room to um, borrow more in the future. But as you can see, our principal, the max principal payment is in 2031 of seven. $1.78 million. Uh, this is a, the TIF debt. So there's two issues, the 2004B CDA and the 2017 CDA. The 2017 was a refunding of five old issues. It's like $19.2 million. <laughs> these loans were only, these bonds are only paid with increment that we receive from our districts, TIF districts. Next. Okay, so utilities, I wanna point this one out specifically. I know Lassa got in trouble oh, was a few years ago. Um, utility debt never is really talked about during the budget process because the only things that you'll see for the expenditures are the interest payments because utility principal payments are only, the only place you would actually see that is on the balance sheet. And during the budget process, we don't usually talk about the balance sheet. But here on the summary, you'll see the issues that are out for the water, water sewer storm utilities. There's a mixture of geo and revenue bonds. And then we also have the 7 point million a proposed debt in there. <coughs> There's a summary of all of the, the principal and interest payments for the utilities. Um, stormwater revenue bond will be ending in a couple of years. And then there's the sewer only has a couple of geo and then water has the large dollar amounts, the 2.5 and the 4.7 revenue bonds. And then in the blue, you'll see the proposed new ones. Okay. Okay, the capital projects funds, the village has quite a few capital projects funds, TIF 1, TIF 2, and then we have the facilities, streets, and equipment. So five funds we keep track of our um, purchases in. Uh, this one is the TIF 1 has the large projects that are the Weston Avenue and the Weston Avenue Birch to Alderson. We have those broken out separately in there. Um, Weston Avenue Birch to Alderson should be done this year. Uh, Weston Avenue, we have estimated to fund about 5.5 million up to finish up the project next year. And then an additional $1 million for just business park streets in 2025. Capital two, TIF, this will account for Schofield Avenue. Um, we have an uh, intergovernmental grant that we'll be receiving from that, and the rest comes from the special revenue and TIF. The facilities in this project is more or less just the parks projects. We have Kennedy and Mock Miller in here. Uh, streets. There's a list of streets that we are completing for 2025 and 2024. Um, majority of streets is funded by um, debt. An unfinished slide. This is a quick summary of uh, the proposed capital um, equipment purchases for the general fund or levy debt and then propose um, where we get the monies from. So in here, you'll see the transfer from the room tax. And you'll also see the charge from the um, recycling utility coming in to here. This last screen, it's just a snapshot of our levy limit worksheet. So I, this is the, this, what you see on the right hand side is a, just a snip from what I have to fill out for the levy limit worksheet. It has all the numbers in there, which you can't see right now because there's a black square box on there. But the 
If you look to the left, I just have it redone on there. And so our the tax increase for operations is $42,000 and then the 410 is for debt. That's what we're looking, or not 400, 410 is total 367 is for debt. So that's the proposed levy that we will have is the bottom number of 10446 of that 2.5 is for the tipping group. Any tax? One five, two point five. You said. Was for the tip increment. Yeah. That's when you look at your tax bill on the Village of Weston line. Two point five million is going toward tip. Like if you go and look at your tax bill on the DC Iris line, there's a portion of that that goes to the tip. Mm -hmm. So. Any questions on the presentation? I questions. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just want to verify in my head here. Um, you got EMPD equipment 2024 of 96,646, and then you've got one for fire EMT 350,000. Is that That's what not... portion of their. So, right now, fire EMT doesn't have anything for CIP. I put it in there. Um, I had it on there on Friday. I did talk to Josh on Friday, but I didn't remove it. Right now, it doesn't look like there's anything for um, safer for capital. Okay, but then the for the EMT, that's what they're going to purchase? Can we put it under public? No, I just said that it doesn't look like safer is going to be purchasing anything. EMP, I'm sorry, the police mm -hmm. department. It probably just wasn't oh, updated. It's in Long Bay. Long Bay, you, you mean? reflects EMPD. Yeah, they, they're yeah. in the budget, there's... I did not change the name. I only apologize. Okay, but that still would be. Yeah, there's about a so hundred. EMPD did spend ninety six thousand dollars this year. We gave our check first quarter. We always give our capital check quarter one, so we did pay Everest Metro ninety six thousand dollars in January. Okay, and that was for equipment. Yes. Okay, but that's kind of what I'm trying to get in my head here, and then I see we have one. Hundred thousand for the Mock Miller Park pickleball courts. Is that still so? If you look on a um, page up above, page six, this is the the proposed CIP plan. This is um, what we should be discussing now. This is what we came together and we looked at the projects. This is what was handed over to Greg. Some of these projects are already in progress. Some are done. Some are still ready to be pursued. So this is the point of discussion where I think we need to look at and see, make sure we're comfortable with what's on here. We'll have that name changed from EMPD. Yeah, and that just shows up because it was for EMPD. So yeah. moving forward, but the 2024 oh, statement was okay. EMPD. So it went into EMPD. Not into M Mountain Bay. Okay, correct. Yeah. So, but then the Adeline, right? So yeah, Adeline, for, and for, then and then as we dissolve EMPD, then that would be taken off, right? Yes. When, whenever we dissolve it, we likely would still. I mean, even this year, we have a piece of capital in the budget for Mountain Bay Metro. That's just how we account for a piece. So there, there, you likely will still see a piece of capital for the police department in the budget. And it's just figured into our. And who's it, which one is it for the the current one? It would going forward. It would be for Mountain Bay. So we would put that in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah for and if you wanna if you wanna declare that ninety six thousand that was given in January, then fine, leave it in there for EMPD. Well, it has but, to be because that indicates the expense we. Right. Need. Okay. So every every the all the municipalities put their money in in January. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Jim? The parks numbers, is that, is, some of this is paid, right? Or are they like the concrete borders? Does that include, uh, they added the extra one concrete border at Mock Mueller, or is that included in the 40,000? 
No, I don't believe the extra concrete border is included in the 40,000 because that mock Mueller, we took that from savings we had on playgrounds for ARPA and for uh, when you get a subdivision. And the parkland fees. Parkland fees. That was the, out of that 40. We had savings in playgrounds. Yes. Oh, and then the hockey boards at 75,000, that is what they're looking at that we could contribute to the hockey boards or what? That was a placeholder before because we knew that those hockey boards needed to be updated. So yes, hockey is, is helping to raise funds, but likely would still need some support. And we know that those boards need to be updated. Okay, and that's that, I remember, I think at the last meeting we were talking and they said, well, could we help contribute to, and I just realized we had it in the budget. So that's why. Is that for the, the, the skating rink in the winter or is it different? It, it was it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It would be for the. They were looking at a around one hundred thirty thousand for boards at this point. So wow. Yeah. How long do they last? The ones out there now have been there a long time. Yeah. Some of them are original from before I started here, so twenty five years old. I'm just throwing this out there. Have we ever considered looking at a synthetic ice rink? A what? A synthetic ice rink. It's it's essentially a rink that does not require freezing temperatures that can be set well, up. I, but we're talking so, about boards. Right. But so, okay. It's it's all the same thing though, correct? We're talking boards, you're talking the stops that get set up that you fill with water, correct? Yeah, yeah. He's talking like an acrylic surface. Correct. Yeah. Instead of just spending money on the boards, have we thought about doing something like that? Because the last few winters have been not very conducive for that rink. And if it's gonna keep going in that direction. If we're going to spend $75,000 on boards that can only be used a couple weeks out of the year, maybe we should look at spending a little bit more money for something that can be used a lot more often. Just, just a thought. Okay, so I don't know if everybody else is just not saying anything, but I certainly don't understand what we're talking about. So I'm, I'm thinking boards are vertical boards. Yes. That keep the puck inside. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yes, but it's, it's all the same. It's all part of the same system. I'm talking okay. about the surface and the boards, but... Right. So the surface has boards or just ice? It's a synthetic ice. It's, a, it's synthetic. You're talking synthetic. Yes. But we don't have synthetic. We have ice. Now. We just make, we just fill, flood it with water. Yep. And, and then level it off. Yeah, yeah. But the boards are part of what retains the water. Yep. And right. makes it happen. Yep. If you don't yep. have, mm -hmm. you, you'll have seven days of playable ice. Like we have I'm just thinking $75,000. It's a lot of money for split board. I don't know if they're made out of wood. I don't know. I'm not a. So if it's a guy, synthetic but... uh, uh, surface, we could be year round. Correct. I guess that's a question. As part of the Candy Park redo, there is a hockey facility that the Everest Youth Hockey is working on fundraising or getting built. So I guess maybe that's a discussion with them. I don't know what they cost. I haven't looked into it, but I'm just thinking. Yeah, it's, uh, the hockey group, I thought, were looking at whatever, and we they just did ask if we could help contribute something from our budget because we had it for the boards. That's... But I, I don't know, Sean, is okay. that my remembering correctly? Yeah, yeah. And it is definitely something we could discuss with uh, youth hockey and look at. Um, I actually know a supplier, it's called Chill Skates, that they do acrylic surfacing. Um, so like I said, you would have year round skatable. It's not ice, but it's a synthetic surface. Is it a different skate or a different blade? Um, it's, don't believe so. Don't believe so either. It's the same thing. Yeah. Well. What do we have left on ARPA? Nothing. It's all going. Yep, it's all gone. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not gone yet. That should be a topic of discussion. We have we have months to get a signed contract to spend the money. Okay. And I don't think we have one yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more? So the county park design and that jazz that's in here, that's not ARPA dollars, right? This is borrowed dollars. It actually is part of its art problems. The design is. There's two columns, the 85,000 and the 665 would add up to the, what is left in the in ARPA. ARPA. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it was approximately 766, I believe. So, yeah. So the balance of the ARPA is what we did, is what we seeded the parks. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. What has, what contracts we need have contract. we signed yet? No. You have to reflect that the funds are committed. We did with the engineering, but we want to get the bids out for the fields, and then that would 
commit the rest of those. You have to have a signed commitment, a contract by the end of 2024. For, for the feds. And then expend it before 2026. Okay, well, that I know you were just saying that there's, you know, some of them haven't been signed yet. We've only got two and a half months to have it. And I was just wondering where is the hang up or what are we going to get it in time? All right. I said enough. CIP is done. Capital funds. I I got one more question. Okay. Uh, street sweeper lease versus street sweeper purchase. Are we leasing one right now? We are leasing one right now, and then we would purchase it outright next year. Uh, uh, we looked at pricing out a new sweeper this past summer, and uh, over the last five years, they've gone up quite very significantly in price. So I think we'd be looking at purchasing our current unit and then- um, So that, that was the reason for the lease? Was yeah. it too costly to- Yeah, that was a strategy a former uh, finance director had and then uh, and former administrator had was to lease our uh, equipment, I, I believe. And then we were told that's a because bad idea. That because of the wear and tear on that piece of equipment. Yeah, that's right. For the street sweeper, that was the high wear item. But uh, what's the life expectancy of that equipment? Usually, it's about seven to eight years before you start hitting the major um, rehabs of the that's not bad. system. But I think the reason being is I can remember being on finance, and it came through that we were purchasing one, and we haven't finished paying off the old one. Yeah. Because the they have a very short life. So that's what I was looking at. I'm going, well, I hope if we purchase it, we're going to have it longer than what the cost of. Yeah, so so we buy it out and we could probably turn around and sell it and make a profit. <clears throat> well, no, you don't make a profit. You don't make a profit, but you at least. Yeah. You, you get, get something. Get something, back. Of, you get something back versus no uh, just. We're, letting we're the in the no profit zone here. Yeah, so. but that was my, when I seen that too, I think. I was going, okay, I know the reason the leasing was because, like I said, I can remember going for it and looking and I said, wait a minute, we're still paying for it. Do we have a schedule for that? I mean, is it scheduled or is it when we have time? Like for, as far as sweeping. running, sweeping, yeah. All right, good. Uh, they wrote today? Oh, well, yeah, I just, okay. I never see it. I mean, I, I, don't, now, I don't want it out of my neighborhood now for six weeks, but I just don't see it. When I'm up in Merrill, I see six of them. It's 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 they're they're continually going in Merrill. That'd be somewhere. But I also see the bus continually driving everywhere yeah. in Merrill. I know for me, There's nobody it, on it. It, it. Everything that I have, I own because yeah. it doesn't make the, the numbers just don't yeah for me on leasing at least for me in a, well, in a business. I'm not saying it doesn't for everybody. I, I can see the maintenance. So if the maintenance is but high, if it's a high maintenance, I yeah. I can understand. Yeah, well, that was the reason. Like I said, we're all I think they make them the break. So, well, job security. All right. Any more on sweeper? Any more on CIP? Moving on. Capital funds, two thousand twenty-five. We covered that within the presentation. Or did you want? So uh, specifically for the capital funds, those are the. After the multicolored sheet, um, the Excel spreadsheets that only basically has the 24, 25, this is what will be adopted during our budget adoption. So I just wanted to let you know the specific areas where everything is budgeted for and what you will be adopting come November. Is there any specific questions on any of that? Yep. So on that sheet that I apologize, this is back in that other presentation that was just up here, uh, showed like $317,000 or $327,000 uh, of additional levy, right? If I'm yes. understanding that correctly, that's, we sent the tax bill out to everyone for a <clears throat> million dollars divided by all the parcels, right? Now it's a million plus 300,000, is that correct? Million. 367, yes. Oh, I just made that number up, but okay. It's actually on page 18. On page what? Page 18. Page 18. It's the debt service fund, the budget that we're looking at. Got it. 
Okay. So with that said, the if we didn't borrow additional dollars next year, because it showed that number that we had, we were at like 46 and then we're going to 43% for something. Would that eat up this $367,000? If we and, didn't borrow next year, we wouldn't have an increase in our levy for debt service. And we borrow every year? No, we have been because we just built a building. Um, we didn't actually borrow last year. Sure. We built, we borrowed January of 2023 to finish paying off this building. And then we had a Birch Street project in there, but we haven't borrowed since then. And we've approved a ton of projects. So right now this, this borrowing is gonna be covering the 2024 projects that have been approved and future 2025 projects. Okay. So the, some of the goal is to go every other year now. The goal would be to go every other year, but we've had a hard time accomplishing that. <laughs> um, borrowing is expensive, um, especially when you get to the dollar amount that we're looking at. The um, costs for borrowing are just amazing. So my question is, if we don't borrow again next year, will that eat up this three hundred sixty-seven thousand dollar? Well, there's a. If you look at, um, let's look at page nineteen. Okay. Um, that's your principal and interest. And yeah, I did not have a toll, but if you go to page 20, if you look at the difference between 2025 and 2026, it's actually a very large increase. So yes, sir, uh, go back to 20. Go back to page 20? Go up. That's page, up. the numbering on those pages is a little bit goofy there. Oh, That okay. one's 20. Yeah, this is 20, yep. It says it's 18. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says it's 20 on my computer. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, I think it's fine. So the increase between 2025 and 2026 will be the additional debt service that we will be levying in next year. So is that about 300,000 again? The blue line, right? Yeah. Yeah. But how did that go up when we didn't borrow more money next year? That's we just have the debt schedule. So we don't have a straight amortization. If you look at the debt schedule that um, Greg comes up with, okay. um, it's there's room for layering. So he doesn't want too large of an increase next year. So he shifted some of that to 2026. And then from there, it will go down. So if we borrowed nothing next year, it's still going to go up next year. If yes. we borrowed nothing in 26, it's still going to go up a lot. Yes. So that's terrible. What, you, 26 to 27 is going to go up? It's going to yeah. go down. No, between 26 and 27 goes down. It goes down. Between yeah, 25 and 26 the next up. Year, right, right. But if there's borrowing in the next three years, it still goes up. It has to go with the schedule. Like, so we're when we're borrowing, like I said before, it, the, that schedule that he creates is basically probably demand of our the way that you normally schedule out debt payments. So it's it's not <clears throat> it's not like that. It can go up and down. You also don't want it to go this way or that way because you're going to dramatically jump a rate, a mill rate, one year to the other. You want it to stay somewhat. Wavy. Well, are we doing that though? 24 to 25 and 25 to 26? I mean, that it's looks a, like a pretty big jump to me. I can't tell what the number is, but $75,000 or something. So 22, 3, 9, 5, 9, 9. From which one? 24, 25? Uh, 24 is not here, but 25, 26. 376,000, and I'll go up between 25 and 26. That encompasses the new debt. That's the same as the. So this number that's on here for 25 is really what's on the December Christmas card, is that right? I don't know. Like that's that's our tax bill for that's the estimate based on the projection. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So next year it will increase at 367. Yeah. But your that the borrow is in those numbers. If you borrowed the fourteen million, is in those numbers, includes the proposed borrow. Okay. So we're not paying off the fourteen million with levy, only about half of that, and the fourteen million is a little high. Like Glenn and I were talking today, we do 
anticipate that number to come down a little bit, but it's still going to be pretty high up there. I mean, well, wasn't there something at one point, and there again, my trying to remember, um, where when we built the municipal building, that uh, scenario you'll was... see that we always refer to, so, yes. It, that's on page roughly 21. Okay. So that bottom, oh, well, go up a page. So that valley that we hit is kind of the, I guess the, uh, when the decision was made to borrow for the building, and we were at a point where the existing debt was fairly low, and that's when the board kind of was like, yeah, we have the capacity and we have, you know, there's that ability there. Um, you know, so, and then, you know, we, we, did, uh, we deferred street projects for, you know, several years and at, I guess, as we talked about the capital plan, you know, we have 120 miles of road, roughly, you know, a little over hundred miles of water sewer main. And we were on pace to replace them at about once every uh, 120 years. So, um, you know, trying to get about two and a half, three million dollars, two, two, two to two and a half million dollars a year just in our general streets, um, that gets us about a mile and a half, two miles of road. So, you know, if you divide that out, it's once every 50 to 60 years, we're able to reconstruct a road. So I know the dollar amounts are high, but you know, that's kind of where we're at to maintain the infrastructure we have. And we've gotten some grant funding. We, we have some other thing, you know, projects like that coming up in the 27, 26, 27, 28 timeframes where we, we do have some pretty decent grant funding to help, uh, I guess, uh, what do I call it? Balance or help kind of share in that cost so it's not all on the tax levy. But um, I think that's where we talk about that scenario C and, you know, having $3 million, you know, our, our debt payments aren't $3 million. So um, somewhere, I guess we either need to agree that we're okay with increasing the debt slowly so that we hit a that sustainable number um, or we, look at decreasing projects in the future too, um, I, which then has another railroad or uh, cascading effect with our transportation aids, so. We're better off if we could just kind of maintain a distance without dipping well, or- well, you, don't get, you don't get any money if you don't do something. We're 12 times higher than we were in 18 though. So we're not maintaining or- and if this is where we need to be, that's where we need to be, but we have to be realistic on yeah. both sides of it, that the capital projects need to see where they're at and the financial side needs to see where it's at. So we're not having the roller coaster tax bill. Yeah. The answer my question, Mr. President, thank you. Well, last year when we our tax bill went down, correct? But that's not the village's portion. I know, I know, it still went down. <laughs> we shared a tax bill with uh, four entities or three other entities. Optimistic, <laughs> and I encourage you to pay the whole thing, not just I know, entity. I know, I know. I've been looking to see what Everest is talking about and haven't seen a thing. I was talking to Renee, and she's like, Yeah, they, they present their budget and adopt it one night, so maybe next year. We'll want to talk about that. <laughs> that would be really nice. I was gonna say, do whatever. <laughs> well, right. They have constraints too. Obviously, they yeah have a little bit more availability to pull in more revenue from different areas than we do. No. Okay. Any more? I have one more question. Um. I believe it was last year I made the motion to pull funding for the spaying and neutering um, from our road salt fund, which I think Michael is still salty about, unintended. Um, did we take that back out? 
Is that on Mountain Bays? Is that under your budget now? Or? No, we have some funds for community cats. We do not, it's not $15,000, but we do have some, but I think we've only spent, maybe we've spent $1,200. Okay. But we, I guess my question was, did we give that 15000 in the budget back to him for this year? No, it'll just cancel back out to the general. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it'll just go back. Whatever yeah. was unspent from what? No, did we increase your, we, no, we he did increased his the, salt budget on his own this year. Yeah, I, I adjusted the salt budget on my own as we have a full shed and I, I just wanted to make sure I pulled yeah. it from that because we didn't use anything last year yeah. When, yeah. when that topic came in front of us and I wanted to make sure that the ship kind of got corrected there. Yeah. So. And given that we only spent such a small number on the, the 12 or 14, I, I apologize for not knowing the number off the top of my head. I don't even think we did a budget adjustment. Oh, yeah. It was. We'd have to double check, but I not. I don't know if we did for the full 15, but either way, we do have something in the budget for it. There is budget. excess funds in both the spay and neuter and in the street budget right now because the overtime that we budget did not get used. I mean, obviously there's still time this year, but. We're not going to hit fifteen thousand dollars. No. Okay. 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 So you're good, Michael. I'm okay. good. Okay. Where are we? We're done, right? With that. Utilities. No yep, utilities. Okay. Any uh, questions on utilities? Uh, do we? We were just looking into the sewer utility, right? Is that the one that we're looking at, the strong one. Uh, the sewer rate was approved to increase in January. Uh, I guess we were just revisiting some of the items in the fee schedule because the meter hookup rates have not changed since 1988. Yeah. So uh, we'll be changing some of the fees for sewer. There's a $725 fee that <clears throat> was adopted in 1988 from the town. Um, Water or utility commission. The five hundred dollar <coughs> one. Oh, the seven twenty five one we can't touch. That's the REU. That's right. Uh, the Cedar Creek interceptor assessment, but the the hookup fee was the sewer. Uh, the sewer hookup fee was created by the town sanitary district in nineteen eighty eight, and has not changed since nineteen eighty eight. And we're looking to do what to it? Just modify it to bring it into a uh, something that's more uh i guess the stand try, try to make it more equitable to uh 2024 dollars and you guys probably get paid more in 24 so versus 88 it's, it's really about the kind of a payback to the system for somebody who's connecting to the system that exists right right that but I, I mean the yeah. cost to maintain that infrastructure to include your your staff has increased since 1988. Yeah, and just the, a little bit. Yeah, that's that's not what the hookup fee is meant for, but um, it's true. Yes, costs have gone up, but it's really to, so that they're buying into that infrastructure that's been created. Well, what's our number we're look, we're thinking of? I don't know off the top of my head. I think we start looking at that on Friday. So yeah, a thousand bucks or something like that. Yeah, currently it's five hundred for a single family house, so maybe we'd be looking at eight hundred or. Okay. Yeah, it's just on new new connections to the system. All municipalities are different. It's all based on the you have to calculate and justify why your number is your number. Okay. Are, are we going to evaluate other municipalities? Not that I want to be the lowest. Yeah. I think we should be average or a little bit higher. Okay. But if we have to justify the cost, then other municipalities have to do the same thing. Yeah, it's based on the cost of the infrastructure and you know what. You know, what was it based on the depreciated value of the infrastructure? So, All right. So we'll have that number when that we were targeting Before January. Yeah, it's part. It's part of the fee schedule update. Okay. So, All right. Good. Good. We were targeting October, but October, November. Yeah. Okay. Uh, utilities done. No benefits renewal update. No we don't we. We have kind of an update and kind of not an update. There's a meeting tomorrow for the co-op to vote on a, a high deductible health plan option. What co-op? The co-op we're a part of. 
health co-op. The, the co-op is voting? Yes. Like, what do you mean the co-op? Yeah, there's about 100 businesses in the co-op that we belong to, and mm -hmm. we're all going to get together tomorrow and vote on what high deductible plan we want to offer. Because they can only offer one, right now there's two. Okay. And so this is like on Zoom or something? Zoom and in person and remote. Really? Okay. I just remember getting that piece of paper of all the other members. And I mean, immediately after the meeting, we're going to give that back. Mm -hmm. They did not want that out. So now we're going to actually take off our capes and our. No, we masks. always knew, huh? but they didn't want it on right. public. On yeah, records. okay. Okay. It'll be interesting to see how many show up or are part of it. I think you good, would think damn near everybody should it's be. It's a huge, it's a significant decision. Okay. Do you know what the decisions uh do you do you have the different variations? yeah we have it so right now there's there's only one high deductible health plan um they adjusted the deductibles to meet the new limitation statutory or irs rules the new irs rules to make it a eligible high deductible plan but anyway so they they did that but there's no there's zero coin co-insurance on our current plan and so once you hit $6,000, you're done. Well, a lot of people are choosing that. And you know how quick you can hit $6,000 if you are in the really, emergency really quick. room or an x-ray? Yep. Well, yep. what's happening is these people are done and the co-op has to pay the rest of this. So it's adding to our usage 123%, which we need to be closer to 85. So with this new high deductible plan, there's going to be a 10% co-insurance instead of a zero. So once you hit your max, you're, you're still paying. Okay. So the purpose of that is to make you think, do I really need to go instead of it's all paid for, I'm going. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, in addition to that, there is a new um, payment for, if you go to the emergency room, it's going to be a $500 after 10% well, of your deductible, you still have $500. But they can tell you how many people are going to emergency. Because if you go to emergency, you need, you need to care. And we were finding that out with ours about six, seven years ago. And we finally said, that's enough. And we did the same thing with emergency. It's like $400, $500. Because everyone is going to emergency because I can get in and out really fast. And I get quick care. Now, this way, I mean, emergency is emergency. It's not for everything. And uh, it definitely pulled it back really fast. So anyway, that's the major changes for these two high deductible plan signs that the co-op has to vote on tomorrow. And what percentages of increases are those two? So if they go with the option one, it's a 24% increase over last year. And then option two has about an 18.2% increase over last year. So in other words, we're going to be Premium. looking at... We're going to be re-looking at that motion that I made Correct. two weeks ago. Okay. And we're going to know this tomorrow. So it's uh, either 18 or 24. Well, the traditional is already, so remember the village offers whether either a traditional or a high deductible plan. Right. Mm -hmm. So for the traditional premier that um, we have offered in the past, the increase is 23.5%. 23.5 or 24 or 18. Okay. Well, after we know the firm pick of the high deductible plan, we can, we did, Jessica did some estimation of where we would be at with health plan changes. But then when we know that number, we can, we can put together some real numbers on what would be the potential for the budget. But yes, we will likely have to revisit that motion on the, on the evening of the 21st. Okay. With okay. that unknown yet, if we can't come to a consensus on the 21st, we may need to meet on that following Monday, which is the 28th. I would think so. Yeah. Can um, we, can we, I mean, if that's the case, can we, do we need to meet on the 20th? Well, I suppose that's a regular board meeting. That's a regular board night. What, what do they need to pass this tomorrow? I mean, what percentage do they need to go in, just a, in a do direction? a majority. Oh, okay. There Just simple majority. Yeah. Simple majority. That's it. Okay. I assume you're going. Mm -hmm. 
We will either go in person or we'll join by Zoom. But yes. Okay. If both of you go, can we vote twice? No. Oh, okay. What's that? So can you vote twice? Yes. Just so, very funny. So I, I just want to point out if we, because the, the, the meeting on the 21st or the 28th would be that final determination so we can take notice for the public hearing. If so when is our drop dead date? It would be the 28th because then you're the week of Thanksgiving. The meetings fall a little bit different in November. So your your third Monday was November 18th, but Thanksgiving's late. So if if we had to meet on the 28th, we'd have a meeting on the 25th, the which would be the Monday of Thanksgiving. So I, but October you need you, you need a decision in the end of October to be able to publish. So what I usually do is on the 21st, I would be bringing like a final yep. what's going to yep. go in the paper. But at yep. this point in time, without having anything figured out, I'm not going to be able to have a nice polished final to show okay. you. Okay. Um, it could still happen that if we get everything pretty much ironed out, if I email a final, final version on the 22nd and everyone says it looks good, I can still get it published on time. But if we want to meet in person and talk about that before it gets published, um, we wouldn't have enough time because it needs to go to the paper on the 27th. So. Okay. So okay. we just we will have to move everything back a week if we if we meet on the 28th, we will we can have the the conversation. Then if you want to move the board meeting a week later and meet on the fourth, but just the timing of the notice. They have it out in time. Any more questions on renewals? No. Okay. Moving on, the whole business number six discussion. I have one more thing just to cover under budget, just that I handed out. So we yeah. have been asking just some general survey questions in the newsletter and on our Facebook page about the budget. So uh this is just the response that we have gotten on our four questions to date. We have one more that's coming up. This is not statistically relevant data because we only, the most we had um, complete any one question was 54 people, but I just wanted to share with you the results. We don't have to walk through them in, for sake of time tonight, but I just wanted to provide you what, what was the feedback we were getting from the community on those budget survey questions. So the response was pretty good. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. I would ask the same question. The, the most we had was to question one, and that was um, 52 responses. And the least we had was to our last question, and which was just this past week, and we only had 12. So again, not statistically relevant data, but that's, just- That's both? That's your Wednesday thing and Facebook? Yes. That's terrible. Yeah. Because all the ATV YouTube were like 550 or something. Yeah, that we've been only we've kept these only open a week. We've we keep those ones open much longer, but what what did we get when we had that questionnaire of like where stuff was in Weston? Was it like five or six hundred? You know, I got I got them all right. Nate, the what's in where are you in Weston? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're trying to find it? You no, know, I mean just the ballpark number. It was it, it surprised me. Twenty five. How many? Six hundred and twenty. That surprised me. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I cheated, I cheated, though, I just, cheated a little bit. But other just generally that. looking at this, when I think back to that survey that we did, I see a lot of very similar themes mm -hmm. between this. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like most people are interested in the services, public yeah. works, and yeah. public safety. Mm -hmm. So, well, the public safety and roads, yeah, big time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I wouldn't be asking anything about arts or cultural events. I kind of get like nothing. We could just can we just rent paintings from the public library? Yes, that's you, you can go up there and check them out, which I can't believe. Yeah, so. that was in his office. Yeah, why not? Okay, so now we're good. Okay. Old business number six: discussion and or action on benefits renewal budget amount. So that we're, we got to wait. Correct. That's a freebie. Seven: discussion and or action on 2025 staff compensation increases again. Eight discussion and interaction on 2025 parent market reserve, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, new business discussion and or action on cloud permit. Well, um, cloud nine. So this is going to replace evolve. This is going to replace, replace evolve. Who has cloud nine or uh, darn it? You just said cloud nine. It's uh, what, what is it? Cloud, cloud permit. permit. 
Cloud what? Cloud permit. Yeah. Who has it in this area? No. Kakata and Reedsburg were the two that we were given, although I did see little shoot. So nobody in this area? There's five in the state. Oh, five in the state? Okay. Maybe six. Okay. And wow. What does that do for you? Hmm. Green say don't do cloud. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so I'm, I'm going to say this, and it's going to be a little negative, but it's been a year, and I find that we're still having problems with this. And I know it's trivial, but I can't, I can hear Jamie talking, I can't hear Jim. And I don't know if it's the speakers. Well, no, that's not true. I so I know, I know you said you're going to move the speakers and stuff, and I don't know, I, I just don't believe in that yet. And I maybe I should come to more meetings and listen more, but I think my voice carries. Did you just turn this up? Because I can hear a little echo, and I thought maybe yeah. When well, Michael was talking earlier, I mean they they did adjust. Yeah. Oh, I mean I don't have this on now. It's on, but now it's off. But um, anyway, if we don't, if we can't resolve it any quicker, I think we just go to these. Just go to something else and be done. Um, it does scare me a little bit with this uh, cloud thing. We we bought quite a few cameras that haven't worked out, and now we have them again. Um, you know we we just. We seem to run our course through a lot of IT stuff. I just want to, did we involve everybody? All yeah, the so I actually talked and I sat through all the different. Security. I, I, I'm just begging you, are you yeah. gonna please tell me that Jim was there too? No, Jim was not there. Huge but there, mistake. Huge mistake. <laughs> there are okay, some. I mean, because you're really into it. You're into this stuff. You look okay, at this. There are some, wasn't on, some neat on features. On permit last night. You're yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Was there. Okay, good. Yeah, so there are some neat features. Um, one of the things that um, I'm liking on it is that every project gets a QR code. So going forward, like when we have a rezone or anything like that, um, a QR code gets put out that we can um, essentially put on like the notice so that people can just take their phone, click on it. It also gives them it takes them to the site. It gives them the opportunity to um, put their email in and subscribe to that project. So they don't necessarily have to follow it. Like if they don't get a chance to come to the hearing or if they come to the hearing, but they wanna see if it gets done. So it allows them to subscribe to that. Um, it also gives us some features to give access to um, outside people. Um, so that they can get viewing only for it. Um, it also has GIS mapping. So basically all the different functions, you would come to the site, you would see a little map of the village and you would see exactly where there's different projects. They'd be color coded by if it's a planning project, if it's a code enforcement project, it's a permit. Um, and so you could click on it. So we thought Jim would actually kind of like that feature. Um, it just seemed like so Reedsburg, Kakana, who else? Little shoot, little shoot. Um, Iron and we've county talked or something weird. And we've talked to those. We have the county, Marathon County. No, too? Iron County. Oh, Iron yeah. County. There, there's only like 225 worldwide that happens. So this isn't like a huge. How brand new is this? How brand new is this? It's well, actually, well, it's actually a Finnish company that the whole country of Finland, all the municipalities there, use it. And so they started in 2019, I believe, marketing to the to the U.S. So this is like the U.S. version of it. Maybe it's just 225 nationwide. <laughs> I stand corrected. If well, unless Finland just counts as one. I don't know if they have. It, I had to do digging. To, there's a whole different Finnish website and stuff like that. So it, it, does, make you, it does make you click on like. I thought it was going to be painful, but it wasn't too bad. You go to whatever it is, cloudpermit.com, and you log in, and and you have to you have to click on your state, and that's how I learned that hey, there's only five in Wisconsin. I think California only has one. So, and this this has two hundred some in the states right now. Well, California only has one one municipality that has this. They have no money. Two two hundred in this in the all United States. Yeah. How many did they get on last year? So nineteen is when they started. So, okay. So. Yeah, I mean, and it's important for us, I guess, you know, we, we I looked at a, a lot of solutions. Um, pricing was something that we kept in mind. Um, what is the fee structure on here? What, what I, I read most of it, yeah. and, and then I had a talk with Jamie today about 
whether you should look at it, we kind of thought no. But what is their, um, what's the policy or what, what can they do to raise prices? Shows that it's a three year contract. Yeah, it's a three year contract. Year. And, then, and then is there a limit on what they can raise it on the third year? I think we would revisit it at that point. Uh, revisiting is different once we're involved. Yeah. Once we're there and in, yeah. now whatever they decide to do, now we got to move again. If they go I, to I high. can certainly ask those questions with them. Yeah. With the... Have you ever heard of ClickUp? ClickUp? Yep. No. So ClickUp, we got on in uh, 19, our company, about 600 users. We we got on because in 17, Ford got it to ClickUp. Because I was really concerned on how old this company was. It started in 16, brand new in 16, Ford took it on. <clears throat> and we, we have, uh, we're almost <clears throat> done with it now because it's gone up probably 200%. Once they thought we were in and we we're going to stick with it, mm -hmm. Then they just took prices up like crazy and Ford dropped it. But I mean, it's just, it was a huge blunder on our part too. Sure. And then by the way, the QR codes, our IT guy that handles our entire company says, if we use our business phone to click on a QR code, he will take our phone away from us because it's the number one scam out there now because everyone's using QR codes and that's how they get into your phones. Just a thought. So essentially too, there's a mobile app aspect of this for inspections. So when it prints out a permit, there is a QR code on that permit. Mm -hmm. And Roman and Travis would basically be able to access everything okay. from our system out in the field. It's it's relatively just a little bit more money, right? <laughs> yeah, but um, Evolve, you know, there was a, it was an eleven thousand uh, dollar upgrade fee to go to their new version of the website. To add the mobile inspection app from Evolve was another <coughs> 5,000 and then add 4,000 on for the annual. Mm -hmm. So Evolve ended up, would ended up being more money going forward. Right. Um, did, did this cloud, whatever the name is again, they, did they know what we were paying? No. Okay. Other than if I they- I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I don't, we did get some open records requests from a company that specializes in keeping open records, records requests. Um, Asking, uh, asking what our, our evolved yes, for our software contracts. So, wow. I, again, I was dealing with uh, 12,000 plus companies I was working with. I assume those probably so could have been any of those. Yeah. And I get calls almost weekly or emails from these different companies. And I don't even know who's about what about, open about right? changing or like who our software yeah. is. If we're ready to change, I mm -hmm. ignore all of them. But okay. I would just take as long as possible to. Do an open records request on that. I mean, PowerPoint. You, you. I mean, it's twice a week. They call me, so maybe we should look at it. Maybe it's a whole bunch of money. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Um, did you did you take a look at it? I'm genuinely curious what your thoughts were compared to Evolve. Did you, you go into the communities and absolutely. I, so what you so think? here's what I thought. So I thought it would be really painful because when I I read all this stuff that I went to. <laughs> Well, permits website, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And I read through the stuff and in the tutorial, it tells you because they have like a three minute, if that's what they're using to sell their software, it didn't work at all. But their three minute YouTube video is terrible. But I watched that um, and it says, well, you have, to, you have to click on the state. In fact, we should probably do that. Why don't you just go there and so you can actually demo this for everyone here that's gotta be decision. I'm, I'm actually gonna vote yes if you say yes. I'm not so, in yet. Oh, you're not in yet? No, okay. But I think it's, appropriate to so you can see what it is so it tells you you have to log into it do you have a login or no I don't have a login. what kind of a timeline do we have on this are we looking like now uh yeah we're looking at we wanted to get this going so we could get everything on track to start in 2025 okay. so that we can separate to evolve in 2025 and we're not all of a sudden i gonna log in when do you need this vote like now the sooner the better yeah all right And looked at oh, Jim, uh, everybody at, has your uh, personal email. Yeah. Jamie, you dig in this a little I, bit? I guess. Hold on, let me just stop sharing so he can enter his password. Oh, then. Uh, <laughs> okay. I did. A, I guess I would add. I did a lot of the review of this, but ultimately, it won't. Uh, something that I put as my decision. This is something that the planning, zoning department, was very involved yeah. in, and in, in, in trying to see what would work best for them. So, nobody had any issues. Have you ever used this before, Jamie? I have not used this. Perfect. So this, you have never seen this before. So now this will be completely neutral, third party. Here you go, Jamie Smith. Send it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
You want me to create my first I application? I thought there was a video you wanted us to watch. No, no, no. I don't want you to waste your three minutes because I already did. Oh. So this is the part where it says in the video that you have to select your state. This kind of hurts me a little bit. I want it to be, if this is for the Village of West, then it should default. Oh, it will. So we'll have our own landing page. Yeah. Okay. So oh, basically, no. it's really, really, really user friendly oh, wait, wait, wait. in that aspect. You've never said five wheelies. <laughs> really, 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 really? Really. I, that's, you are, you're all in then. You're in. It gives us the ability on the back end to, to make some changes on the fly so we don't, if you would see what Evolve is okay. like to change anything. I'm my memory from oh, nine o'clock okay. last I thought maybe two We can now. custom, you probably need to look at somebody's site more. And we did look at some of them, but some of them have um, better landing pages than others, but they'll basically customize the landing page. And instead of having to go and try to figure out what exactly you're doing, you basically put your address in and kind of start the application. You don't have to, like right now, you don't have to, you have to pick if it's a building permit or a project or a code enforcement. It, it basically starts you at that same spot all the time. So, so, so I, I did that already and I went to, and the landing page for, I don't know, Frutica, Colorado or something weird. There's this terrible. Yeah, and, and it depends and, on and what- When I got really frustrated is. with this, I, I think I clicked on Kakana, but whatever. I did the same exact thing Jamie is doing right now. So, okay, accessory and structure- Kikana, new... I talked to Kakana. The planning director there brought it from Little little Shoot. He's new. Um, he They're using it for code enforcement and permitting. They haven't brought it in for the planning side because they don't have enough of it to where he- he can um, basically, for the budget purposes, he said he wants to have it, but it's it's not relevant for them yet. So they're looking at changing some of their code enforcement, and then he wants to bring that module on. Here's the part that I thought was useful. Okay. Right? So you can type in your address, but I have no idea where I live in Reedsburg. So just use your scrolly wheel and zoom on Reedsburg. So if you put in an address that was active, there's only maybe a few things in there that you'd be active on. So that's why it comes up right away. You don't have to put in so all your different enforcements and stuff or whatever. And yeah. what you're saying is yeah. your map right now, when you look at it, it's going to show greens and blues and reds and whatever other. We have, so the, the we could turn on whatever we want for people to be able to see. But essentially there's a map and there'd be like a little bubble where you would see like a different color depending on if it was a code enforcement case or oh, okay. something like that. That would be the main page if someone was just using it for like trying to find out information. They wanted to look at something. Um, what the actual applicant sees is a lot different. Um, what this gives us the ability to do that we don't have in Evolve and, and we, we really want, and that will save a lot of time, is that you're talking to the applicant directly in the software system. So it's creating the record right there. Live. Right now, we send a message from Evolve. We all get it in our Outlook system. And if you're the applicant and you respond to me, it's going to go on my Outlook. And I have to remember to go in and put that documentation in there um, into Evolve. So this will have to train everybody to kind of work inside the program, but it's going to create a better record. Um, we can even use it to, and it's probably not going to work very well for the way that we hold our meetings for, for things, but um, you can even create a full agenda out of it. It'll just, it'll make your packet right for you. So if the rezone hearing, it, we could essentially, if we scheduled plan commission a little bit differently, it could create that packet right there. Um, I anticipate it being able to, to have a little bit more for timelines and keeping people on task because it essentially is going to have countdowns that everyone can see, even the applicant, yeah. on the amount of time that we have once we deem it basically a full application to get it through from start to finish. So everything's within the system and creates that record better than what we have with Evolve. And we won't need Evolve anymore. No, we can completely yeah. sever. So Do we have to give them notice. On uh, the contract, it, it was only the first three years there was notice. Uh, it doesn't show that we need to give. Okay, anything. we're going to have to give them notice because we're going to need our data to import into mm -hmm. the system. And, and we've looked at the contract really clean. Yeah, All right. it's not like waste management or something. Okay. Okay. I'm good. You still want to think about it more or what? 
He says time is of the essence. Yeah, I would love to know what the, like, those are all great features. And I saw that and there's archiving and other stuff in there. Uh, it, it shows on uh, that we would utilize it for uh, like pet licensing and stuff too, right? Or licensing. We do license. So that's another. It can mimic everything Evolve does and yeah. more. Mm -hmm. And more. Yeah. Okay. Right. And Pam sat through the licensing aspect of it and she was okay with it. She's good with it. Good. She was kind of the last person to look at it. So it, it does everything Evolve does and more for yeah. an extra $900, essentially. Correct. Yeah. And where's Evolve from? Evolve is out of California. It's a no-brainer. Um, how, how does this work with GIS? It, it wouldn't integrate with that, right? Yeah, so it's a though. Like I, in my report, I talked about, we, we looked at some pro, um, programs that were like a full integration with our GIS program, and they were phenomenal, but they were very expensive. I'm talking. $200,000 uh, upgrade, like in a, in So this can do what you need? Expense or one time? Uh, those were one time, but then the annual, the annual fees were to double this. So GIS. It, it wasn't feasible to fit in the budget, but what this does, it, it takes our GIS data that we have and pulls it into their system. And then this system interacts with it. Our GIS system can't fully interact with it, but it does a lot more than what Evolve does. And I can't, like, I couldn't in my mind make sense of spending that much extra more money for like something like that. I do, appreciate that. Do, do we owe um, Evolve any more money or do we pay once a year? Or what do we do? We pay annually. And that's what? We pay annually. And we so we're paid, paid up, up for this year. So we owe them no money. I'm yeah. just trying to have some kind of something to make sure we get all our data. <clears throat> yeah, you won't get And we would have to put the data in ourselves. They would integrate it in. So we did that with uh, our Intergov. I'll, I'll permit with yeah. So we, we've gone through this once before because we went from Intergov, which was basically a program that we were using just as staff. Mm -hmm. So we would upload everything in there. And when we moved to Evolve, they integrated all that data into there. So it would Evolved just, it. yep. So it would just go to the next. And the FIMS would do it for us too. Yeah, that's part, part of the yeah. 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 That is yeah. part of the uh, one time. I look at all the stuff we built into that. So yeah. Okay. So it's it's twenty-three thousand five hundred per year. There's no escalator on it for the first three years. No, there is an escalator. Oh, there is. Uh, it'll be a little, right around a thousand dollars more. How much? About a thousand dollars more. Yeah. yeah. In twenty six. So how long we've we been with Evolve? It's twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. So what what happened on that first three years? Did it go up? Um, yeah, most it did. It, it did, but you know, about I think it's usually like five percent increases. Most of the software, um, of all the licensing that we have here, um, they don't want to scare you away, you know, because all the work is done now, they just need to collect, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Evolve contract have an escalator on it? No, that's the end with the one. Evolve, yes, yeah, it, they're, all, they're all between three and five percent every year. Usually, they go up about that amount. What does it look like to reface this or because that was a big pain point for Evolve, right? Because we're stuck in the whatever 2017 look and it's it's not friendly and we don't have all these other modules and stuff. So what happens when these guys add stuff where we want to actually we roll it out right to everybody. So there is no extra cost to make it look good or I'll I'll add a caveat caveat to that. Um typically their policy is any upgrades are included with your annual fee. Energo was one of the ones we had. If they completely rewrite their software, then they'll ask for an upgrade. Did, did you talk to any users? I did. Jen talked to the city of Kakana. I, the city no, of no, that's not a user. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're a customer. No, oh. I mean Quick Trip. So Quick Trip's in Kakana. They're in Little Shoot. They're in Reedsburg. They're in every probably town you have here. And I, I mean, I, I thought I shared this, maybe I didn't, but when Quick Trip built up by the highway, I called them, just thought I should and asked them how we did. Unbelievable. I think I shared that with you. I, I think I, you weren't here yet, but they just said, uh, fantastic, I, above average, below average, above average, everything is great. And I kind of took that because there was some talk back then about how we weren't, you know, it, it's kind of the locals that feel that sometimes, but you know, Quick Trip, why not talk to Quick Trip? They do this everywhere. They're putting 300 in every year. And uh, I thought I felt really good about that. So they would be someone that has been in Kakana and Little Shoot and Reedsburg putting in 
probably their fifth or sixth one and ask them, hey, have you ever done a cloud permit and see what they think? I, I'm just thinking oh, that's, a that, that's, a, that's a completely unbiased way. And I'm sure they've done, well, they did evolve with us. They probably did six other different formats. Just, just a real quick, and and then if and if they have some ideas or reasons on switching, then we switch. Now I read in here that if we tell them that we want this changed or this would be better if we did this, it becomes their property. You read that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean that'd be pretty normal. I mean we're not going to yeah. own this thing, but if we give them ideas or a customer gives us ideas like Quick Trip, and then they we tell them, and if they use that, they're not going to pay us. So, okay. yeah, all right. I'm good. What's the real thing? Jim. Oh, Jim, sorry. Well, any of the, I'm not worried about the difference in cost. I think it's negligible, but will the additional cost um, be realized by gains or savings and staff efficiency? Oh, good question. Right. So yes, it costs $2,000 more or really it costs $12,000 more the first year, but gosh, I don't have Roman writing stuff down on a clipboard and then sitting in his office and then retranscribing it. You don't have all of your staff uh, rewriting the emails and doing this and that. It's all in that software. Whereas, gosh, I only have to send it one time. It's there and it's in the guy's got it and he either makes it or he doesn't. Like I, I think the win, I know you're trying to find money, but the, the win with, with someone that goes through this whole situation and doesn't see or, or doesn't get what they think they should be getting is also a win, well, you know, because you've got a lot of questions I'm, I'm involved. Advocating for it, yeah, saying involved that, in that, yes, yeah. it's a, a few dollars more, yeah. but we're yeah. going to save staff time and be more efficient yeah. because of this. Did you feel that? Oh, yeah. And oh, I yeah. think Roman, wasn't he the one that brought this one forward? Oh, no, it was, he brought this one up. Um, because the inspections aspect of it. Right. Is that where our biggest, like, yeah, the biggest, time constraint the biggest thing is for him is inspections. Mm -hmm. Because there isn't a um, a mobile app with Evolve, you have to go through the website. So there's not a real easy way to like incorporate his checklist and things like that, and also to pull from um, codes. So him being able to, he has to come back into the office to send off code deficiencies. So he's working with it, it's live. He's yeah. inputting right as he goes. And so another neat point that the Kakana um, director they use it for code enforcement. They'll pull it pulls right from um, Unicode. So whatever you're doing, it'll pull right from another, that are basically our code of ordinances. So we don't have to make sure they're up to date. So that's the other problem with Evolve is somebody has to go in now. When you make say we're making these changes into the animal ordinance, somebody has to remember to go in there and update. Fix it on Evolve. Mm -hmm. So how does how does this one pick it up then? Because it peels it, it from the from Unicode. Unicode. The oh, Unicode. Unicode. Okay, and Unicode is everywhere. Well, that's what we currently use. Right. There's okay. other aspects, other codes. So they must know that they have to dive into that stuff. So mm -hmm. we're going to do it this so way. So okay. th these were just things that oh, Evolve huge. just really doesn't do. Mm -hmm. We also Good. asked Evolve about doing the on-site, and they said that they that it's not something that they foresee happening right. in the future either. No. There wasn't enough upgrades to keep it um, in our mind. And recently they've been well they charged uh, us charging for you know, the chicken license it was like two thousand dollars or something to just create the chicken license i'm not going to try yeah. to figure that out I saw well, i'll make a motion to approve the agreement with cloud permit to provide software services for planning permitting inspections licensing code enforcement as well as an online portal for customer use second a uh, motion by cronin to approve an uh, agreement with Cloud Permit to provide software services for planning, permitting, inspections, licensing, code enforcement, as well as online portal for customer use. And seconded by Zagami. Any more on the discussion? <clears throat> Effective now? Or when are you gonna, what's that timeline? Now, because he, so that he can start working on this. Oh, yeah. Can they have this done by 24 or the end of 24? Can they have the integration done? Yeah, we talked last week that they feel that if we get this signed, it can begin work. Um, Will a human body be here? Was, or is it all online? Just all online. Be online. Be online. Yeah, yeah, be okay, online. that's fine. Good to win off the weight. Yeah, he just said it. So it, it would be listening. So this this would go. We would you start using this January first? It would be hopeful at least to get the permitting module 
Okay. Up there. Okay. That would they be all cool. have to be live though, because if you're turning yeah. Evolve off January one, they all have to be live. Yeah. Or you pay Evolve another year. Well, you just hold off. Yeah, the goal. That's what I want is for it to start on January first. So. Okay. Okay. So I'd offer. So what is what is what is the cutoff date for Evolve? Is it December thirty first? Yeah, because we would have to. We're paid up yeah. to that. Well, it'd be really I, nice if you can get it started December first. I don't want not? to see us pay that fee another year. So I don't know if I need to include that in my motion. Yes. Because um, if we're going to move, I don't want to be stuck paying $23,000 no. twice. Um, ETA, Nate, I'm getting this up and running. He and I talked last week, January 1 was. I know, but January 1 is is boom, boom. I, I agree with if December we, if you 1. Do if December, it's running December, December 15th. 1. Uh, and give yourself a little bit we, of. We could have it like an internal test site to December 1. But because we're not paying I mean, for the I wouldn't annual fee until 2025. Yeah, don't push yourself. Well, even if we do the annual fee on December 15th, who cares? You got a 15, two week uh, lap over, big deal. Yeah, you could change the contract through December 1st. Yeah, sure. So that there is no, so then we, you'd have to amend your motion to make it effective December 1, not January 1. Because I think it's too fast, or you would you rather have the 15 more days? I think that can be. That be done. I'll have to talk to Representative Club. We have another meeting in two weeks. So. Done December first. Yeah, so I'll amend my motion to implement a start date of December first for cloud permit. And will you second? Second the amendment. All right. So, um, any more on the discussion yeah. on the amendment? Hearing none. All those in favor of the amendment to go to December first startup, um, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. So carried. Now on the original amendment or on the original motion to accept this. Uh, cloud permit. Um, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Good. Remarks from trustees, Jim? None. None. Uh, Cronin? None. Shane? None. Barb? None. No, we're not going to need anything on the board. No. Nope. Oh, we got a card down right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, my remarks. Uh, this isn't really a monthly meeting. Did Jamie ever get back on? No. No. Oh, okay, that's absent then. Um, let's see. Then that's all I got. Um, um, I, I didn't say in the beginning I should have, but Andy Sutton's in our office or in our uh, presence, and he'll. I believe you're one of the on the twenty first. He'll be here. I am. Okay. Will be. All right. Um, those are my remarks for topics for future meetings. Twenty five yeah. budget. Yeah. Whoop. Oh, go ahead. You, did I miss you? No, I, I read, I misread. Well, I went right past you. I'm sorry. No, you didn't. I was, oh, I had a couple I, topics I, I, I wanted to bring up I and I figured I, to apologize. Okay. I could do it under that bullet point, but I, I misread the agenda. So, okay, go ahead. Um, Nick Av, can we, can we discuss that again? Sure. In two weeks, I, I did get a call from Gary Garrett. What does he want to do? Is it what? <laughs> Nick, East Nick Av. Oh, okay. That's what I thought you said, but I wasn't sure. Well, you saying two weeks? Do you mean on planning commission? Uh, well, I'd like. Right. I think it needs to be discussed at the board level oh. first. Yep. And um, I, I don't know. The last time you've been out there, Josh, I know uh, some of the comments you made a while ago. It's been a while since I went out there. No turnarounds, no nothing. And I can't think of the family that's. Uh, this is just remarks, so this is not discussion. But the family on the corner side say they're going to build more homes. Groshucks. What? Yes, Gros that's it. I say the dad's name. I was going to do the golf. He's gone now. Oh yeah. Grandpa. Okay. I so, but I the last one, the last two I visited out there, and I don't know what Cornwater is doing. I do. Are we having any communication with Cornwater? Okay, because that was always by that the administrator that didn't even realize how it was working. You know, who's doing public safety? It's us. So we're supposed to be sharing, but I don't know what we're really sharing there. So I, I just think they have to realize what they're doing there. I so. think they have a discussion on that. Yep. Because always oh, we're gonna have to get just, some kind of a cul-de-sac or something in there. So it um, sounds like you already clarified, but is it are we do are we doing interviews at the next meeting? 21st. 21st. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 21st. I did, did I miss an email or something? Uh, you might have. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. That's right. I think for the evening of the 21st, we, we have a tourism meeting. I don't think we'll need a finance and HR meeting. And then we'll um, we can discuss if maybe we can even start a little bit earlier, handle some board items. Well, you got to change it to, the time then. When, well, the, when the notice goes out, you got to go to 5.45 or 5.15 or- Is this October 21st? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there's a budget. 
Yeah, but that's our regular. That's four our regular. Four. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean but it, I have if we still have six o'clock, we can't why. start. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Would it, is it? Would anyone be opposed if we started that evening earlier at five? Not for me. I don't think it'll feel. I'm not so fine. Am I looking at this? We do have tourism, tourism would be before that. Yeah, the tourism, tourism would, would be at four thirty. Four thirty. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I had. Budget. Or or it's, say immediately following tourism, and then the, the, that'll give us anything. Is that what it says. It says five or following. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Well, I think we were we were gonna do. Back. We were gonna have tourism, finance, HR, the budget, and board. Then I saw the email on HR. Yeah. I missed that one. So, okay. Just block out that whole evening to spend with us. Yes. Okay. What does on the twenty first know? Are we starting at five or four thirty? Um, tourism will for tourism. Start at four thirty. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. okay. I got that. The, the tourism. Well, then I'll just be here. At four thirty, though, you're going to get through that whole contract in half hour plus all the tourism jazz. That sounds pretty. Well, we, can, we won't be no, done. No, we could. We could we, do. We can go again. But we could do board. We'll just do the budget piece and the board piece together, and we could say immediately starting after tourism. For tourism, like Jody said, there's five grand applications. That's up to us if we want to go through them that night, or if we're going to defer those. Okay. Um, we need to know, obviously, by the end of this week, so we know whether we need to collect those from her. Are okay. any of them still events this year? <clears throat> She said she didn't say. I'll have to send those out though. I mean, we can get those to us earlier, right? Yes, okay. we, we can. But we. Can. But the contract doesn't have to be done that night. No, we no. we said we probably would come back in December. I mean, we do want to get it to the board though in December. Yeah. Oh. We're, well, we're asking the CVB to bring a contract back to Rothschild because every time Rothschild sends them one, they say no. So then we said at the last meeting, CVB, you. Tell, tell us what you would like and bring it back. Um, you know, and I, I brought up what we said is, um, would you rather have 65% of two communities or, you know, 35 or, you know, 40% of one? And obviously, you know, they would want that 65. I mean, if we were, if we were at 35 and Ross, I was 30, you know, so it's going to go down for us. So we also could move tourism. I mean, three of our, yeah. our, or here, if we move tourism a little bit earlier, that that day too, if that's boring. I can do four. Can mm -hmm. do four? Yeah. yeah, I'm free. I can reach out to Kim at the Holiday Inn. Oh, yeah, Kim, Kim and us. Uh, Kim and Jamie. Do you want the grants then? Yeah, I, I think we should. If they're out there, let's let them know. The well, uh, only ones would be if they're if we would have another meeting before that event would actually occur, depending on the timing of the event. Well, sometimes they got to kind of get their ducks in a row yeah. as far as funding too. But tourism is that for us. But if, the, if they submitted their application early and their event's not till next July, that, you know, I think we, let's just ask the question. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Uh, no more remarks for me. Uh, what? I'll just talk. Topics for future meetings, uh, 2025 budget timeline, October 21st, circle back to previously undecided items and finalization. Uh, also, the next meeting is October 21st. We're going to do tourism first, no HR, no financial. And um, we'll start uh, tourism probably at four. And then four. Start our, our right afterwards. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Any more? No, we can't really have any more. How about an adjournment? Oh, I'll go with that. Uh, so, uh, Erling makes a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Second by Pinsonall. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, so carried. Adjourned at 810. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, later. Have a good